Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we're gonna demonstrate overload protection using an AutoGuard ball detent style torque limiter and how to adjust those torque settings in the field as well. And our special guest today, Fraser Lamont, he is with AutoGuard, a division of Rexnord Industries. Fraser, welcome to the program. Hi, Tom, thank you for having me. I'm excited about the demo that we have here today, but first, tell us about the function of the torque limiter and then we'll see what you got for us. A torque limiter is a problem solver mm -hmm. for applications that experience damaging torque spikes due to jams and overloads. The primary function of a torque limiter is, is to protect the manufacturing process and expensive mechanical equipment against costly downtime and damage. Now, why are overloads so dangerous? Rotating equipment has enough rotating energy and inertia to cause major damage due to a jam or overload. Both equipment and downtime are very expensive and can cost thousands of dollars per minute or per hour, depending on the application. All right, so AutoGuard manufactures ball detent style torque limiters. Now, how are they different from other types of torque protection? A ball detent torque limiter is a disconnecting type of torque limiter. It acts like a mechanical circuit breaker that will disconnect the drive from the driven equipment at a preset torque value. I'd love for you to demonstrate that, but sure. before we get going, we always have to make sure we wear our personal protective equipment, otherwise known as PPE. Whatever the application is for you, make sure you have the proper PPE. All right, it's okay. all yours, Fraser. All right, first of all, you always want to place the torque limiter as close as possible to the part of the equipment you need to protect or your weakest link in the drive. This display represents a typical shaft-to-shaft -shaft connection. On one side, you have the driving component, such as a typical 1800 RPM motor or gearbox. On the other is your driving component, such as a conveyor belt, crusher, shredder, or an extruder, just to name a few. Now, how long does it disengage? Well, let's, let's get this rotating. As you can see, both shafts are rotating. By turning the handle, we are demonstrating system rotation and also applying torque. This is our 400 series torque limiter. It also makes butter. It does. <laughs> <laughs> On this demo, we have set the torque to 100 inch-pounds, which means when the torque setting is exceeded, the torque limiter will trip and disconnect these two shafts. And now, by dropping this pin... Ah, I heard that click. One side's working, one side's not. Correct. And now, by dropping the pin, we have just simulated a jam. You can now see the driven side has stopped, but the drive, drive side is allowed to continue to rotate. So your motor can just keep running? Excellent question. We recommend that you use some type of shutdown device. You want to shut down the motor as soon as possible after disengaging occurs. Okay. We do have models that will allow their system to run disconnected indefinitely, but with this particular model, prolonged running in a disengaging condition can shorten the life expectancy of the torque limiter. However, you can see by disconnecting the two shafts, any inertia that was in the drive has now been disconnected. All right, now, how does this happen, though, on a ball detent style? Well, there are drive balls inside the unit. In normal drive condition, the balls are in detents sandwiched between two plates. Upon overload, the balls roll out of their detents. The unique mechanism inside the 400 series prevents the drive balls from re-engaging into the next available detent. Re-engagement will only happen when you reverse the drive or advance the driven. It's kind of like a Kardashian, very hard to re-engage. Yes. Know? I never thought about that. <laughs> um, so this is a manual process then to reset it, is that correct? It can be, but depending on your application, if you can jog the motor in reverse, it can be reset remotely without physically touching the unit. Here, let's show the reset. Okay. Oh, okay, so when you reversed it, I heard it click back in, so now ready to go? Yeah, well, by, re by reversing the direction, we, we can see that the unit resets itself. We can now begin turning our demo to simulate system startup and return to production. It's a quick process, no replacement parts, and no need to readjust your torque setting. Wow, I mean, that was awfully quick. So AutoGuard torque limiter can be reset manually or automatically in seconds, obviously, we just did it. So is the torque setting done in the factory and can it be changed once it's installed in the field? Many units are set at the factory. It's at the request of our customers. Based on the application data we receive from the customer, we make an educated suggestion of the torque setting required to protect their equipment. However, each AutoGuard torque limiter accommodates a wide range of torque settings. If you experience nuisance tripping is when the unit trips when an overload hasn't occurred, you can always readjust the torque setting. Can you show us how that works? Sure. If you look at the four inches, you can see the springs inside okay. the adjusting. Now. Yeah, I see it right there. Okay. okay. If you need to increase or decrease 
the torch setting, simply mm -hmm. tighten or loosen the adjusting nut. Yeah, you're compressing the spring or, or letting the spring that, come out that's there. That's correct. Okay. If you need a more aggressive setting, uh, you can always add or remove springs. Yeah, this is how we remove them, so we just... Uh... This can be done while the unit is still installed. Simply make your changes and you are ready to resume production. Wow, well, Fraser, thank you so much. That's Fraser Lamont from thank AutoGuard. You. It's a division of Rex Nord Industries. And uh, if you need any more information on this, please contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. Hopefully this will help you with your practical application. Don't forget, I had my PPE on. Always wear your personal protective equipment, uh, whatever the job calls for. And don't forget to look for other how-to videos as well with me, Tom Clark, as your host from Motion Industries. Thanks for watching.